The country that has camels, money and entertainment is Saudi Arabia. This country is run by Wahhabis. Wahhabis are those who drink camel <laughs> 300 years ago, Wahhabis didn't even exist. How did this sect of Islam called Wahhabism come into being? How did the people of Saudi Arabia get converted into this new sect? Let's concentrate on history. We'll go back to the year 570. On the map, you can see modern Saudi Arabia and its neighboring area. The purple colored area got ruled by the Byzantines. The peace colored area belonged to the Sasanian Empire. The cyan colored area was part of the Nubia states. The green colored area was part of the Aksum Empire. But if you put your eyes on the yellow colored area, you won't find any empire here. How could this happen? I mean, there are at least four different empires around modern Saudi Arabia, but none conquered it or even tried to. The Arabs and Arabia was in between the two major superpowers of the time, and those were the Sassanids and the Byzantine Empire. So Arabia is smack in the middle, or you can say southmost, but it is in between. Wars are taking place right above Arabia in the Syrian hemisphere or, or, or land. Wars are taking place for 400 years between the Byzantines and the Sassanids. Arabia is right there in the middle. Another point is that the fact that the Arabs did not have their own unique civilization. Now, what do I mean by civilization? Some people ask me, what do you mean they didn't? I, when, when I say they didn't have civilization, I mention certain uh, uh, benchmarks of a civilization. The first benchmark is a unified government. If you don't have a unified government, you don't have law and order in society. I mean, that's the first benchmark of a civilization. You have a unified government. The area doesn't have many natural resources or geographical importance. So no empires actually tried their best to conquer it. Moreover, the Arabs lead a tribal and nomadic lifestyle. So if any empire tried to conquer it, it would have to fight with hundreds or maybe thousands of tribes separately. That's why Arabs were independent and were never conquered. The Aksum Empire took over parts of the Arabian Peninsula. In 570, its governor Abraha tried to conquer Mecca but failed miserably. Five years later, the Sassanian Empire conquered the area, but the yellow colored area remained the same. In the 7th century, Islam appeared in Mecca and Medina. Soon it spread through the Arabian Peninsula. The previous map changed dramatically. We should remember that the earliest masses of Islam was first introduced among the Arabs. Why is this information important? because Wahhabism emerged as its founder wanted to re-establish the earliest state of Islam. We'll return here, but for now, let's return to history. In 661, the Umayyad dynasty was established. Islam continued to spread around the world. Many new non-Arab nations came under the rule of the Islamic empire. Islam was a regional religion before this era. After the Umayyads came into power, Islam became a global religion. The Islamic empire was governed according to Quran and Sunnah. It was sufficient to solve problems based on Quran and Sunnah when it was a regional religion. But after Umayyads took over the Islamic empire, many non-Arab civilizations came under the rule of Islamic empire. These civilizations were culturally superior to Arabs. They converted to Islam, but some of their previous religious ideas were still in their hearts. So they incorporated those ideas into Islam. For example, the Byzantines and the Sasanians believed in the holiness of their priests. After most of the Byzantines and the Sasanians converted to Islam, they invented a similar concept of saints in Islam. Not only in religion, but also the overall Islamic culture was altered and enriched. For example, the staple foods of Bangladeshi Muslims were rice and fish, and the staple foods of Arabs were dates and bread. There was no reason Bangladeshi Muslims would accept dates and bread as their principal meal. In some cases, the senses were positive, but in many cases, the senses were also catastrophic. The northern and central part of the Arabian Peninsula is known as Naz. A man named Suleiman was born here in a poor and a small tribe. In a dream, he saw a fire coming out of his body and spreading around the region. Power lands and towns were destroyed by the fire. The dream interpreters predicted that the son of Suleiman would come up with a theory that Arabs will accept. Al Abd al Wahhab never fulfilled the dream, but his son Muhammad materialized it. Muhammad was born in the year 1703 or 1704 in Waina. Muhammad memorized the Quran by heart by the age of 10. He learned how to interpret Quran. He was also a scholar of Hadith. At the age of 12, he got married. After the marriage, he performed Hajj. Then he traveled to the nearby regions and wrote a book called the Book of Monotheism. 
The book became a hit among the Arabs. Muhammad stood against the treacherous acts of a nearby tribe. The tribe tried to kill him but he fled luckily. Muhammad traveled to Iraq, Syria and the towns of Iran. He observed different forms of Islam in many parts of the Islamic empire. When Islam was in its earliest state, it was powerful. After Islam incorporated different innovations, it became powerless. Muhammad considered innovations unacceptable even though those innovations were not related to religion. Muhammad formulated his theory and he was ready to convene. So he returned to Waina in 1740 or 1741. He converted the chief of Waina to his new doctrine. Muhammad and his followers started to destroy shrines, holy trees and tombstones. They found a woman in adultery. So Muhammad commanded the people to kill the woman by throwing stones. This incident sparked tension among Waina and other tribes. Waina depended on al Hasa economically. The chief and the scholars of al Hasa became terrified of Muhammad's popularity. So al Hasa chief asked the Waina chief to kill Muhammad. The Waina chief sent Muhammad on exile. Muhammad understood that he must fight his opposition to establish his new doctrine. He settled in al Diria in 1744 or 1745. He got some followers there. The chief of al Diria welcomed Muhammad warmly. Muhammad converted the tribe chief and asked him to lift the tax he imposed on his people. The tribe chief did so. The popularity of Muhammad among the people increased exponentially. Suddenly he got many followers. Muhammad proposed to the tribe chief to raid their nearby tribes as he considered them non-Muslims. The tribe chief understood Muhammad's motive. That's why he lifted the tax imposed on his people. You can earn money from taxing people but raiding the tribes would give you more. Hundreds of poor nomads started to join Muhammad's army. They started to attack nearby tribes. The rival tribes began to fall and convert. Soon the whole Arabian Peninsula converted to this bizarre and new doctrine that would prevail in the next few centuries.